In chapter six, we look at a few more types of data uh, graphs. I know you've done bar graphs and histograms and, and circle graphs and all those things. In this chapter, we learn about a couple more. And the first one that we talk about is called a scatter plot. And a scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two data sets. The data sets are graphed as ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. So let's make one in example one. We've got this table and it shows the ages of 10 adults and the number of gigabytes of a cell phone used by each adult in one month. So this is the amount of data that, they, that the person used in one month. Uh, we're going to make a scatter plot and then we're going to talk about these things called outliers, gaps, and clusters. And they're pretty self-explanatory, so we'll look at those in a moment. Now, the first thing that you have to do when you make a scatter plot is figure out what your scale is. You want to make sure that it's spread out, so you want to use the grid. Uh, you don't want everything to be squished. And when you make your scale, it has to be equal intervals. So I'm going to look for my, uh, my lowest and my highest number for each range and then make the values from there. So my lowest is 25 years old and my oldest is uh, 65 so if that is the x-axis then let's see I can do this little squiggle thing called a break and that shows that there's no data lower than 25 so 25 is going to be my lowest and I'm going to go by fives so that's going to be 30 and that'll be 35 Now I need to do the same thing for my y values, which is the data used. My lowest is 0.9 and my highest is 3.5. So I can probably go by like 0.5s. And I'll label the x value as age and the y value is data used. All right, so we're just going to plot some points. So I'll plot the first two, and then you can plot the rest. 37, 3.2. Now, the thing with scatter plots is you're not going to get everything to land on a perfect intersection. So you just kind of estimate. So 37, 3.2 is like somewhere over here. Um, then I have 33.3. So that's pretty much right near it. All right, pause the video and do the rest. If you want, you can number the rest of these. It might be more helpful. So we've got this scatter plot, and there seems to be like a little bit of a trend. As people are get older, they are using less data. Um, the last thing that we have to do is to identify outliers, gaps, or clusters. Now, an outlier is something that seems like it lies outside of the other data. So you can see this, um, like, 30-year-old who doesn't use as much data as the other 30-year-olds. Uh, so that's our outlier. There seems to be a gap right here, like nobody in their 40s was really surveyed. And this cluster right here is, um, I guess they surveyed a lot of people in their 30s, and so there seems to be a little clump right there. So this scatter plot is showing what we call a negative correlation. As the age goes up, the data used goes down. And there are other types of correlations or relationships. Um, you can have a positive linear relationship. You could have a negative linear relationship, which is what it looks like. Our data is up here. It looks like this is kind of like a negative linear uh, you could have a nonlinear where it's some sort of curve or it could be like a squiggle or something that's not linear. Uh, or you can have this no relationship where the data points are just all over the place. In the next two examples, we just have to describe the relationship. So we went over those just a moment ago. And we have to identify any outliers, gaps, or clusters. And the asterisk right here is letting you know that 
if you don't see any outliers, gaps, or clusters, you don't have to force some. So sometimes there aren't any of them. Um, all right, so we've got television size and price. So it looks pretty uh, positive, right? Like they're it's definitely going up. It looks pretty linear, like a really steep line, other than this dot right here, which we're going to call an outlier. So we've got a positive linear relationship. Uh, let's see, we've got this cluster right here. There's a gap of, like, you know, nobody sells televisions in the, you know, 30, 30 range, high 30s. Um, and then there's this outlier. Okay, uh, and letter B, age and number of pets owned. There are dots all over the place. This is no correlation, and that should make sense to you because how old you are shouldn't really correlate to how many pets you have. Um, it's not like the older you get, the more pets you have, or the older you get, the fewer pets you have. There's not really a good relationship with that. So we're just going to say no relationship. And I don't see any clusters. I don't really see any gaps because the dots are just all spread out all, all over the place. And there aren't really any outliers because the dots are just really scattered. All right, last one. The table shows the amounts of fat and the number of calories in 12 restaurant sandwiches. So you know how now the restaurants show how many calories are in their sandwiches now. So they've grabbed a bunch of um, information and we have to figure out how many grams of fat do you expect in a sandwich that contains 650 calories? So we're not actually going to make a scatter plot. It's already made for us. This data right here are these dots. So someone took the time. So they have a break right here. They have their scale being equal spacing. Everything's labeled. It's beautiful scatter plot. Now they want us to predict 650 calories. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to where 650 is and then we're going to kind of drag it across, and it will be somewhere in here. So maybe there? I don't know. Do you think that would make sense? Um, yeah, I'll go with that. So I would say that is about 38 or 39 grams of fat. It's just a, a prediction. Um, you could be off one or two. It's just your estimate. Um, but I'm going to say 38 grams is my answer because when I put the dot at 650 and I dragged it over to where like the dots were, um, that's where my dot landed. All right, if you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.